This is Nick. This is Jack. It's Tuesday, T-Boy Tuesday, April 11th. And today's pod is the best one yet. It's such a T-Boy. We have an incredible show for you today. What a show we got for the Yetis, Jack. Do you think we should kick this off? Should we get right into this thing? Let's do it. For our first story, Nintendo stock is up 5% since the premiere on Wednesday of the Super Mario movie. Besties, what is more important, novelty or nostalgia? or Koopa Troopas. For our second story, for the first time ever, more millennials own homes than rent homes. It looks like you can chug a cappuccino and still buy a condo. And our third and final story is Tupperware. They just told us they could go out of business any day now. A business can go sour, but a brand never expires. Even in, a, especially in a Tupperware. <laughs> But Yetis, before we hit that fantastic mix. Wonderful mix of stories. I love this mix. Do you remember that iconic scene from Mean Girls? Are you talking about the lunch table, Jack? Are you thinking what I'm thinking here? Yeah. When Regina George leans over the table and says, on Wednesdays, we wear pink. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. But Yetis, on Tuesdays, we wear T-Boy. Yesterday, we dropped our first ever T-Boy merch. You can see it right now. The spring collection at tboypod.com. Looking good. We dropped the hat a crew neck sweatshirt, and two wonderful t-shirts. Honestly, Miranda Priestley, she would approve. So you want to know how day one went? Besties, are you curious about our apparel debut, the numbers? It went incredible. Fantastic. We were overwhelmed by your enthusiasm. We're almost halfway sold out. Half of the goods are gone. No joke. Nick and I woke up and we checked our inbox and we got a lot of Shopify emails. 5.30 in the morning, I'm texting Jack, order number three, order number four, order 58, order number 106, and it went on. We got orders from across these United States, but also from Spain, from London, from the Philippines. Arigato, Japan. It's coming your way, baby. Now, this was a special moment for our show because Nick and I, we never get to see you the listeners, our fans. Like, funny flaw in podcasting, uh, we don't have a physical connection with you right now. But you just bought our physical merch. If so facto, you just bought the T-Boy brand. And it feels great, because that means you know today's pod is the best one yet. And if you know that, then you know that today's lunch is the best one yet. Yeah, even that meeting with Carol from Accounting this afternoon, it's gonna be the best one yet. Jack, today is anything is the best one yet. From dinks to dinkwads, thank you for almost shutting down our shop on day one. Do not worry, we are already working on more inventory. More mediums! Nick, Let's hit those three stars. Jack, let's order some more hats first. <laughs> then let's hit the three stars. 15 years before this song, two boys from the Northeast met in the dorm. They had an idea to cause a cultural storm. It's the best one yet, but the best is the norm. Jack, Nick, that's it. I don't even think they need to practice. 50%, that's a fat tip. T-Boy City on your at list. If you know, you know, because we ready to go. We can't wait no more, so just start the show. Start the show. For our first story. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. Is it a for our first story? <laughs> Super Mario <laughs> Brothers is on pace to bring in, get this, $1 billion at the box office. We guarantee it's not the last Mario movie because marginal creativity is the most profitable kind. All right, Jack, we're going to jump into this thing. Can we talk about, is this our favorite origin story? Did we decide that? I love this story. This is a great origin story. In 1985, then 33-year-old Shigeru Miyamoto invented Super Mario. All right, let's sprinkle on some context here. A Japanese man created an Italian plumber who is from Brooklyn <laughs> and named him... Named Mario. Mario. Did he like... Go to Brooklyn on a tourist trip and... Literally the most multicultural thing we've ever seen. It's unbelievable. And that plumber is now cast in a Hollywood movie as Chris Pratt. And Bowser is voiced by none other than Jack Black. Yet yeah, we are talking about Mario and Luigi, the most impressive mustaches in cinema since Tom Selleck. Yes, and this movie doesn't have extras. They have Koopa Troopas. If you walk into the theater with a banana, you will get thrown <laughs> out of that theater, Jack. You'll get hit by a red shell, actually. <laughs> and this movie just set opening weekend box office records with $204 million domestically. Jack, can we just sprinkle on, I guess, a little more context to this with that number? That is more tickets sales at the movie theater than the opening weekend 
for the Dark Knight. Nick's in my favorite movie ever. That is the prism through which we view and gauge every movie that we've ever seen. <laughs> now, why did Super Mario Brothers defeat the Dark Knight in the theaters? Here's the answer, Yetis. It's because Super Mario Brothers satisfies the four quadrants of a blockbuster movie. The four quadrants of theater. It's divided by first age, then gender. Young and old, male and female. Unlike the Dark Knight, this movie, Super Mario, it caters to both children and adults. Exactly, Jack. We got adults today who played Mario as a kid. They're going to the movie for nostalgia. And then you got kids today who are playing Mario today. It's still one of the top selling video games ever. And it's not just age. This movie also happens to satisfy both genders. Princess Peach and Mario, that's a love story. Yes, it is. Luigi? He's the third wheel we can all relate to. It's awkward, but it's true. Yeti studio executives butter their popcorn for this kind of cinematic four-quadrant combo. All four quadrants of age and gender were satisfied by this movie. Oh, and you want to talk more about the numbers? Jack, would you say the stock market gave this film two thumbs up? Wall Street was satisfied too. Nintendo stock is up by 6% since opening night last week. Yeti, this is not even Nintendo's business. This is just like a side hustle. They did a movie and it boosted their stock 6% percent in one day. That's billions of added value to Nintendo. Not too shabby. Watch out for the banana. <laughs> oh, you hear that sound, Jack? That means it's time for our takeaway. So Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Nintendo? Marginal creativity is more profitable than original creativity. Daddies, let's get into more of the numbers here. Super Mario only cost $100 million to produce. That's it. And now this movie is on pace to bring in $1 billion. 10x return. You know what this means. <laughs> yeah, Jack. The Nintendo Cinematic Universe is coming. Definitely. Because the beauty of this movie is that the viewers already knew the basics of the Mario story. That content was key. Right. Your pre-existing love for Mario lowered the threshold to convince you to buy a ticket. And then this movie brought in marginal creativity. Right. Like the origin story of Mario and Luigi, which we'd never heard before. And the excitement of what Donkey Kong actually sounds like. And what does that sound like, Jack? Apparently Seth Rogen. Yeah. So the real opportunity here, Yetis, get ready for some spinoff movies about Yoshi's childhood. You no studio executives are looking at a Toad trilogy. Oh, Jack, how about an origin story of whatever box it is that Donkey Kong throws at everybody? <laughs> Christmas gift 2024, Donkey Kong cart. Zelda versus Donkey Kong. Yet he's the next big franchise opportunity, the Nintendo Cinematic Universe. Because marginal creativity is more profitable than original creativity. For our second story, we just passed a major millennial milestone. For the first time ever, more millennials own homes than rent homes. But that doesn't mean renting is the wrong move, necessarily. No, it does not. But Jack, hold the champagne. Can we pop open a bottle of Spindrift over here? That's how you celebrate a millennial milestone. Yes, it is, Jack. Can you introduce the news for us over there? For the first time, millennial homeowners outnumber millennial renters in America. Get this, Yetis. 52% of those of us born from 1981 to 1996 own a home now. According to Rent Cafe, over half of millennials own the home they live in. And we did it all while drinking double-digit lattes. <laughs> Take that, Grandma. You can have your avo toast and eat it, too. You can drink three cappuccinos and afford a condo. It's possible. Now, you might be wondering, how do millennials stack up against previous generations? It's a fair question. Jack, let's whip out the whiteboard over here. All right. Uh, all right, Jack. So what was the average age of baby boomers when they bought their first homes. The average baby boomer was 33 when they bought their first home. Jack, what about Gen X? How old were they when they bought their first homes? 32. And how about us millennials? What was our age when we bought our first homes? We were 34. We were 34. Honestly, better than expected. I actually think that's pretty good. We'll take it. I thought millennials were way later in these like big life events. But only a couple of years, actually. Okay, and then how old were you when you bought your first home? I forgot. 33. Okay, I was basically, I was like 31. We'll rent, let's average us out to 32 on this. We were Gen Xers by home buying age, millennials by actual age. Not too shabby, millennials. Stick that on the fridge, Uncle Doug. Okay, so millennials just hit a home ownership milestone 
But we have to point out, at the same time, we just hit a rental record. Okay, Yetis, millennials are also simultaneously the dominant rental generation at the same time. Right now, there are 17 million millennials who are renting in the United States. And Jack, what is the number one city, the number one place, the headquarters of all millennial renting? It's Los Angeles, where houses are really expensive. Yeah, the number of millennials renting in Los Angeles actually rose 7% over the last five years. Okay, so 17 million millennials are renting which is a larger number of renters than any other generation. But here's how we're looking at this, Yetis. That's not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, those renters might be on to something. Right, full disclosure, this is Nick. I've bought a house, but now we're renting as of like a week ago. Nick went back to renting. <laughs> That's right. You know, I told you he moved down the street in San Francisco. Yeah, funny story. He's renting again. You can go back and forth. So Jack, <laughs> what's the takeaway for our buddies over in all millennials out there? Don't get ho FOMO. Don't get home FOMO. Yet he's buying a first home. It's always been the core investment of the American dream. The financial benefits of home ownership are obvious. Instead of burning money through rent, you build home equity instead. Okay, but let's look at the numbers here. A triple wave has made home buying more expensive than ever in just the last year. In just the last few years, home prices, mortgage rates, and the cost to maintain a home have all hit expensive highs. So the way Jack and I see it, if you are in that 48% of millennials that's renting right now, don't get too much ho-fomo, home FOMO. Because in many markets, renting has never made more financial sense. And now a word from our sponsor, Robinhood. In the future, you may wear pants on your head and shirts on your feet. We don't know what future you will dress like. But we do know that future you will be happier if present you prepared for retirement. Future you would be really happy to wake up 40 years from now with a loaded IRA. Although no one knows how investments will perform, an IRA offered by Robinhood is like giving future you a gift from yourself. Because Robinhood matches 1% of every eligible dollar you contribute to future you. It's the the only IRA that does that every year. Limitations apply. To get started, go to Robinhood.com slash T-Boy and get your first stock for free. Conditions apply. That's Robinhood.com slash T-B-O-Y. All investments involve risk. Contributions to and withdrawals from IRAs may entail tax consequences. Robinhood does not provide tax advice. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. For our third and final story, Tupperware just had its worst day ever. Tupperware just lost half of its value. Because Tupperware said it may throw out itself. Tupperware is the legend of the leftover lasagna. It's the queen of the day-old crusty casserole. Jack, when I'm at your house and you got too many tamales, what are you going to do with that stuff? Toss it in the Tupperware, stick it in the fridge, eat it tomorrow for lunch. Yeti's Tupperware, invented in 1946 by old man Earl Tupper, just outside of Boston. Earl Tupper was a man who always cooked too much food and wanted to save that food. Now, we know you're wondering. Yeah, we did cover Tupperware six months ago, almost exactly six months ago. And why was that, Jack? On that day... The stock fell by 40% after a bad earnings call. Because Yeti's Tupperware, they've been struggling lately. Tupperware was invented way back when plastic was invented. But here's the problem. Tupperware still today only sells plastic containers. Like no glass, just plastic. No glass. They also don't sell in stores. They only sold at Tupperware parties, which is like a thing of the past. Now, Yetis, here's what Jack and I are fascinated about with this company. They are struggling right now. And yet, on paper, Tupperware still looks strong. They have 8,500 patents with the U.S. Department of Patents. Crazy copyrights. They also have the most recognized brand in food storage, Tupperware. They've been hoping for a Tupperware turnaround. What have they been doing, Jack? Six months ago, they started selling in Target for the first time to be more convenient to customers. Here's the problem, Yetis. Last week, Tupperware did just about the worst thing a company can do. They made an announcement on a Friday afternoon. Yes, they did. But Jack, what is rule number one of PR? If you got something bad to announce, yeah. announce it on Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah, get that bad news buried on a Friday afternoon. Everyone's distracted by the Friday happy hour. Nothing kills a story like heading to the Hamptons. And then on Friday afternoon, here is what Tupperware filed in a report with the SEC. They said there's a substantial doubt about their ability to continue as a going concern. It feels a little jargony, Jack. We do a little translation on that thing. It means they think they might go bankrupt. Yeah. The stock of Tupperware plummeted 50% yesterday after that Friday announcement. It's cruelly ironic. Investors think 
the stock might not be worth saving. Literally, a company whose business is saving things is being thrown out by Wall Street right now. And anybody who owns the stock looked at the stock, identified some mold on the stock, <laughs> and sold it. Yeah. Don't worry, Yetis. It's now worth just $50 million, not even a lift. That's the whole company. If you have like a rich uncle, they could buy Tupperware, the company. If you did well in your March Madness office bracket, you could put in a bid for Tupperware right now. Well, if you did really well. So, Jack, what's the takeaway for our buddies over at Tupperware? The business can go sour, but the brand doesn't expire. Yeti's Tupperware stock is down a whopping 94% in the last year. And yet Tupperware's brand is still the most recognizable in all of food storage. Tupperware is like Kleenex. It defines the whole category. Tupperware's brand is so strong, Tupperware products are literally in the Smithsonian Museum. So the way Nick and I are thinking of it, for $50 million, a business could buy Tupperware, toss out the Tupperware-making business, and just use their brand name and logo for other products. For example, Amazon could buy Tupperware and then stick the Tupperware brand on all its Amazon basics. Instacart could buy up Tupperware and stick the Tupperware logo on their frozen meal kits. Jack Starbucks could acquire Tupperware and then stick the Tupperware brand on its reusable glasses. Yes, they could. Yes, they could. And we've seen this before with Radio Shack, Forever 21, and Toys R Us. All those companies, they went bankrupt. And then someone bought the brand and did something with it. Because a business can go sour, but the brand doesn't expire. Jack, can you and that fantastic looking T-boy hat whip up the takeaways for us over there? Super Mario Brothers beat the Dark Knight because it's a four quadrant movie. Super Mario is proof that marginal creativity is more profitable than original creativity. For our second story, more millennials own homes than rent homes for the first time. But don't get too much ho FOMO. <laughs> <laughs> because in many markets, owning a home can actually be worse financially. Hofomo's the worst. Oh, you got to hate Hofomo. Avoid it. And our third and final story is Tupperware stock. It's at an all-time ho. <laughs> Just roll with it. That is great. Oh, Tupperware stock's at an all-time low as they warned that they may go bankrupt. The Tupperware business is going sour, but the brand doesn't expire. Now, time for the best fact yet. This one sent in by legendary Yeti Kelsey Black from lovely Austin, Texas. The Vatican City in Rome, the home of the Catholic Church, has a fun financial fact. Get this, besties. The Vatican is the only place in the world where Latin is found as a language option on their ATMs. That's right. You've reached the Vatican ATM to continue this conversation in Latin. Press one. It's because when you're trying to get cash at these ATMs, they are owned by the Vatican Bank, which is a private financial institution where they're really into Latin still. They say it's a dead language. Yeah. Evidently not. You like go withdraw your cash. You better <laughs> remember your Latin <laughs> lessons over there. <laughs> Jack, how much would you like to withdraw? Maximus or minimus? <laughs> it says the fee is unlimited, Jack. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Yetis, you look fantastic today. Jack, you look particularly fantastic in all the T-Boy merch. If you want the merch, by the way, where can the Yetis get it? tboypod.com slash shop. Yetis, whatever you want from the best one yet, you can get it at tboypod.com. Nick got pulled over in San Francisco today and somebody said, what is that hat? They don't even care about the pot. It's just a great looking hat. It's just that good a slamming salmon hat. It's fantastic. Nick and I. We'll see you tomorrow. Can't wait. And before we go, congratulations to Yetis James and Brittany, who just celebrated their eight-year wedding anniversary in Chandler, Arizona. And happy birthday to Tim Maloney, a proud Rivian, soon-to-be Rivian owner from New York City. Timmy, the king of Round Hill and the Upper East Side. And happy birthday to Elizabeth Dwyer in Charlottesville, Virginia. Elizabeth, the Wahoo Cavalier Dwyer. And happy birthday to Jakey Rubenstein on the Upper East Side, who's got a bar mitzvah coming up. And Leah LeBron, happy birthday at the University of Albany. Happy birthday to Carolyn Hughes in Fort Worth, Texas. And Maria Vanessa Berrigan has also got a birthday in Fort Worth, Texas. And happy birthday to Jacob Riardans in Thousand Oaks, California. And Jack, Jacob had a very particular birthday gift request. Can you help you him out? You ready for this gift? You ready yeah, for this, we're Jacob? Ready, you ready, ready for this? Ready, we go. Okay, Chris. <laughs> There you go. And to anyone else celebrating something today, make it a T-Boy. Celebrate the wins. 
This is Jack. I own stock of Amazon, and Nick and I both own stock of Robinhood. And now a word from our sponsor, Robinhood. Is there anything more stressful than a buffet? You got the chicken or the fish, the salad or the salsa? You're paralyzed over potatoes versus pork. Well, when you're saving for retirement, you may feel that decision fatigue too. Which stocks or ETFs do you invest in for your IRA? Well, with Robinhood, you can get a personalized recommended portfolio. You can pick your own stocks or ETFs, or you can do a bit of both. You can do their recommended burrito bowl pick a little bit of everything. And customizing your retirement portfolio is commission-free. Other fees may apply. To get started, go to Robinhood.com slash T-Boy and get your first stock free. Conditions apply and recommended portfolios are not available to residents of Massachusetts. That's Robinhood.com slash T-B-O-I. All investments involve risk, contributions to, and withdrawals from IRAs may entail tax consequences. Robinhood does not provide tax advice. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC. Best compliment we can get. <laughs> That's awesome. I thought we could uh, shout out some people who placed orders, but then I realized that was like a privacy va- uh, violation. <laughs> we're like, we, they like, they like buy it and it's like, we will not use your personal information for anything. And the next day we're like, thank you for ordering four things <laughs> in Sacramento. <laughs> Adam, that's the outtake, man. <laughs>